can forget the ever iconic classic Home Alone? Well, they decided to spice things up a bit and have him get lost in the Big Apple. And yes, the clumsy robbers from before are back with a vengeance. And that's why today in Flick Summary, Home Alone 2 Lost in New York. Just like the first one, the film opens with the McAllister family running around the house as they get ready for an upcoming trip to Florida they have the following morning. Before their trip, the family heads to a Christmas recital Kevin and his brothers are scheduled to perform. However, things go a little poorly when Buzz, his terrible older brother, in case you forgot, constantly teases him throughout his performance, causing Kevin to lash out and basically destroy the entirety of the recital. Should have burned this place down when I had a chance. Back at home, Buzz manipulates and performs an Academy Award worthy apology, which the entire family eats up. Kevin has a little more pride than that and explains how he really isn't sorry at all as he explains his reasons for messing up the Christmas recital. I'm not sorry. I did what I did because Buzz humiliated me. And since he gets away with everything, I'll let him have it. You go, Kevin. You tell them what Buzz did. Unfortunately, Kevin takes things a little too far and insults the entire family and has everyone quickly turn against him, while Buzz is still acting like a sweet little angel we all know he isn't. What a troubled young man. Kevin gets sent upstairs as his mom, Kate, joins him, telling him that the last time something like this had happened, Kevin had been left home alone, but this time around things should be a little more peaceful, for his sake. Our boy isn't having any of it though, claiming that if things were his way he would be going on a vacation alone without any of them and have the most fun he's ever had in his life and not go spend Christmas at a tropical place. Rightfully so, Kevin. I agree. But what does that have to do with him? No, no. He's got a point. Can you guess what happens next? Once again, just like the first movie the McAllisters accidentally sleep in and are running all over the house trying to make it to the airport on time. This time around though, Kate learned her lesson and checked for Kevin before leaving to the airport, but he was one step ahead of her boarding the car before she even bothered to wake him up. Shame on you! The family rushes all through the airport as Kevin tries to catch up but gets distracted by a brand new recording device that is in need of batteries. He follows a man that looks just like his father from behind and boards the plane with him. Of course, not before he convinces a lady to let him board the plane after he accidentally dropped his ticket. All the while, the McAllisters don't get a chance to even do a head count before they are forced to enter the plane, otherwise it will leave without them. It goes without saying that our boy Kevin and the McAllisters are headed to two very different destinations. It'll be one hell of a ride. I guess you could say our boy Kevin won. He is on his merry way to New York. Score! Once Kevin's plane lands, he realizes his wish to have a solo vacation has come true and his family is nowhere in sight. On the other hand, the family is picking up each other's suitcases when they finally notice that they have done it again. They forgot Kevin. Kevin, give this to Kevin. Give this. Kevin's not here. Kevin's not here. What? I guess this time around they didn't really forget him, they just didn't get the chance to do a headcount. They report the missing child to the Florida airport security and aren't too freaked out about Kevin's disappearance and even joke about them losing their own kid, but never their luggage. Funnily enough, we never lose our luggage. <laughs> <laughs> If you're wondering how Kevin feels about spending some time on his own yet again, well, he doesn't mind too much that his wish came true, as you might expect. My family's in Florida. I'm in New York. Plus, there's one other thing Kevin has in his favor. You see, before he got lost along the way, Kevin's dad, Peter, asked him to hold his carry-on, which just so happened to have all of his cards and cash inside. I guess it's a lucky day for our boy Kev. While Kevin explores New York, he runs into a lady that strikes him the same fear the old man Marley did in the first one. This lady, however, has some strange bond with pigeons that absolutely terrifies Kevin, quickly running away when he spots her. For the first time in my life, I'm afraid. But everything can't be a spooky lady and a bed of roses, can it? 
So, remember the two bad guys that invaded Kevin's home and lost to him? Well, they have escaped prison and they are out to make up for lost time. And as they are walking down the busy streets of New York City, they unknowingly bump into each other. But that's not relevant right now. As he looks for a place to stay, Kevin not so timidly chooses the plaza as his humble abode, even running into Donald Trump himself in the process. Excuse me, where's the lobby? Down the hall and to the left. Anyway, Kevin also has another secret weapon, his recording device. You see, with this little thing, Kevin can record his voice and edit it for it to sound deeper, which is exactly what he does when he pretends to be his own father as he supposedly calls in for a plaza reservation for his kid. Our boy uses his wits to his favor and manages to score a room for himself. Gotta say this kid is insanely smart. If no one told you yet, you're a genius and an artist. Look. All the while, the concierge, Mr. Hector, isn't too fond of a little boy staying at his hotel, deciding to send one of the buttons, Cedric, to find out everything he can about the little boy. We'll get to that later. Kevin explores everything the hotel has to offer, from fancy suits to swimming pools and fancy room service. Of course, ice cream for dinner is the law in Kevin's world. The concierge breaks into Kevin's room as he once again uses his recording device to his favor, scaring Mr. Hector away as he makes him believe that Mr. McAllister has made it to the hotel safely. The following morning, Kevin orders a limousine, accompanied by the cheese pizzas he adores. I want one. He asks his driver if he knows any good toy stores, and he drives away to Duncan's toy chest. Unfortunately for Kev, his fun will soon be cut short now that the credit card has been reported stolen, in order for his parents to get a hold of Kevin, and he most certainly knows about it. All the while, the bad guys from the first movie are planning their next strike, and it just happens to be exactly where Kevin is headed, Duncan's. Some men just want to watch the world burn. Once Kevin is at the store, he is absolutely marveled over the store's white selection. Heck, even I want to go there. Our boy gets himself a present and pays with cash up front. When asked about how he got a hold of that much money, he only says, Where did you get all that money? Uh, I have a lot of grandmothers. Of course it does. Kevin and the cashier get to talking as he explains that all the money the store gets from Christmas sales will be donated to the children's hospital. Kev realizes that Mr. Duncan is a mighty nice guy if he's donating his money to the hospital. So our Christmas spirited boy decided to donate an additional $20. I'm rich. What a sweet kid. In fact, the cashier is so shocked from the kid's generosity that he decides to give him two turtle doves, one for himself and another one for a special person. So cute. Once Kevin leaves the store, he finally gets spotted by the bad guys he destroyed in the first movie as he runs away from them. Well, well, well. How the turntables... As he should, Kevin screams bloody murder as soon as he lays eyes on the two scoundrels that made his past Christmas a living nightmare. Or, well, more like the other way around, but hey, they started it. He manages to outrun them and makes it home safely at the hotel. However, the concierge isn't particularly keen on receiving a kid with a stolen credit card, but Kevin, after once again using his wits, is able to get past him and hotel security, rushing to his room as he realizes he has committed credit card fraud. You are stealing right to jail. The concierge and the hotel staff break into the room once again and Kevin uses old VHS he brought along with him to confuse them into thinking it was Mr. McAllister. Merry Christmas, you filthy animal. And a happy new year. However, just as he outran the hotel staff, he once again fell right into the bad guy's arms, who for some strange reason tell Kevin about his plans of robbing the toy store. As you may have guessed though, it isn't too long before he once again outruns them. Quite a lot of chases in this movie, huh? On the other hand, the McAllister family has finally gotten news from Kevin and find out that he is alone in one of the busiest cities in the world. They announce that they are heading for New York this time around and the entire family cheers with excitement. Yeah! Yeah! Back to
to Kevin, now that he isn't welcome at the Plaza Hotel, he is aimlessly walking around a park, where he encounters all sorts of freaky creatures. There, he encounters the spooky pigeon lady once again. After screaming when he spots her, he realizes the lady is only trying to help him. He apologizes for his lack of manners and invites her for a cup of hot chocolate. They go to a rather particular place and she explains that sometimes she feels like a pigeon, alone and unwanted. As it turns out, Kevin can be a sweetheart sometimes as he encourages her to put herself out there and find some friends. Not going to lie, he is actually really wise for someone so mischievous. Anyway, the scene was way too sweet and emotional. Once they part ways, Kevin remembers about the two thieves who want to rob the store on Christmas Eve, no less. Being the little hero he is, he decides to go and stop them. And oh boy, it gets rather crazy. We all go a little mad sometimes. Gathering items and supplies from the street, Kevin elaborates a trap similar to the ones in the first movie. This time around though, he is not going to go gentle. Not one bit. We'll get back to this in a second. The McAllisters have finally made it to New York and severely scold the hotel staff for allowing a child to check into a hotel room. What kind of idiots do you have working here? The finest in New York. They get a room for the entire family and Kate decides to go look for Kevin somewhere in the city. Now, back to the juicy stuff, Kevin's revenge. The thieves finally get to open the toy store's register and are now fluting with cash. Just when the pair starts celebrating, they get a startling knock from the window. He proceeds to take a picture of the bad guys and now has incriminating evidence against them. Oh, but it doesn't stop there. He starts using almost Looney Tune-like methods of violence in order to stop the villains. That goes from throwing bricks at them, shooting staples at them, making ladders and stairs slippery, throwing tools on their heads, oh, and of course, electrocuting and burning them. Some men just want to watch the world burn. Yeah, I guess you really shouldn't mess with Kevin McAllister, much less on Christmas Eve. For a second there, Kevin's methods backfire and accidentally land him with the bad guys yet again. They take him to a secluded location, take the pictures away from him and pull out a gun on the poor kid. But luckily for Kev, dozens upon dozens of pigeons were hanging about. And you know what that means, right? Well, if you don't, it's the nice pigeon lady. Yay! She manages to have the pigeons attack them while she covers them in tiny little crackers. Kevin thanks her while she only laughs at the villain's misfortune. Thank you for your cooperation. Before he leaves, he sets a bunch of fireworks that attract the police attention and let them right where the bad guys are, who just so happens to be carrying the very pictures that incriminate them. Obviously, they take them away without a second thought. Later on, thanks to Mother Power, Kate manages to convince the police to join a patrol to look for Kevin. We cut back to our hero who is standing near a Christmas tree as he wishes for no presents, only to have his family back as soon as possible. And wouldn't you know it, guess who found him seconds later? That's right, Kate. They both apologize for being mean to each other as they head to the Plaza Hotel once again. The following morning, Fuller, one of Kevin's brothers, excitedly wakes up when he realizes it's Christmas morning. Originally, Kevin isn't too excited given that Santa doesn't visit hotels. Obviously, Fuller wakes the entire family up and there they have it. A house full of presents. Buzz finally gives a genuine apology to Kevin and encourages him to open the very first present. After spending Christmas morning with his family, he visits the pigeon lady and wishes her happy holidays. As he shares one of the turtle doves Duncan gave to him in order for them to be best friends forever. Just before the film ends, Kevin's dad shouts from the top of his lungs just how much he had spent on room service, which just happened to around $1,000. Well, way to ruin a moment. And that's all for today. What other Christmas classic should we do next? Let us know in the comments below. And as always, don't forget to subscribe, like this video and share it with your friends. See you next time.